So for this video, I just wanted to walk you through how a use after free vulnerability works and what it is. So simply put, it is exactly what it says. It's when an application attempts to use memory after it's been freed. So what this code here is going to do is it's going to first allocate some memory on the heap that has enough space to hold the string. Uh, and then it's going to just simply copy the string to that memory. So first we're going to allocate a a a a a a and then we're going to print the address of the uh, the buffer that was returned and then its content. So if we run that, we're going to see here's the address of the heap memory and there is the content. Now, if you look at the code, what happens if we free this buffer and then allocate another one that contains b b b b b b b? Well, So now both buffer one and buffer two point to the same memory and they both contain the string bbbbb. And the reason for that is because we unallocated the first buffer and we reallocated one of the same size, the heap manager went looking for some free space to fit that string. And because we had previously freed space of exactly the same size, it then allocated the new memory exactly where our old memory was allocated, essentially overwriting the previous string. Now this is a pretty cool vulnerability because the main aim is to find a way to choose what memory gets allocated in place of the old buffer. So if it was say a pointer to a function that got accidentally deallocated and we could allocate something of our choosing there, we could set whatever pointer we want and the application would call that. That's actually what happens with the Bluekeep vulnerability. A, a class gets deallocated by accident and then the attacker can allocate a new buffer in its place, essentially creating a fake version of the class, which has a pointer to whatever memory they want to call. So I'm gonna actually walk us through some practical examples here. Um, with an application I actually wrote uh, is one of my challenges. I have some challenges up on my blog, and this is the one from, I believe, December, 2019. And it stores two things on the heap. Uh, firstly is the uh, a client descriptor, which is the chat client class that I'm showing on the screen here. And secondly, the username of the client, which is pointed to by the username field of the chat client class. So if we look at the username allocation, if the username is previously null, aka it's not been set, then it's gonna call the allocate or resize username. And if it is allocated, but the length is different from the previous length, it's also gonna call that function. So if the username isn't set, it's going to allocate a username. And if the username is previously set and they're trying to set a new username, which is of a different length, they're go it's going to resize the buffer. So here's the code. Uh, firstly, if the username is previously allocated, we're going to free it. And then we're going to allocate a new buffer of the new size. And then we're going to just uh, zero it out. And then we're going to return the new buffer. Now the problem exists here. Basically, if the length of the new username is zero, it's just gonna return because it, it, we can't allocate memory of zero bytes. But the problem is we've already freed the username. So if the user were to set their username and then try to set their username again to something that's empty, uh, a, a username of zero bytes, then it's going to free the old username and then return without creating a buffer for the new one which is going to leave the username field of the chat client class pointing to memory which is no longer allocated, which is our use after free vulnerability. So how can we use this? Well, I'm gonna show you a little demonstration. Okay, so this is a diagram of all the different heap states we can create. So firstly, we have the correct heap state. That is with the client descriptor, uh, each field is gonna be four bytes because this is a 32-bit operating system. We got the vtable sock id and so on and then lastly we have the username field which is going to point to some different heap memory which contains the username in my case uh, the username is malwaretech so in order to exploit the vulnerability what we can do is create a username that is the exact same size as the client descriptor the chat client class instance which in this case is ox18 bytes so first we create a username of ox18 bytes then we set our username to, uh, to an empty username, so a zero byte username, which triggers the use after free. This username gets freed and it isn't replaced. The pointer now points to some unallocated memory. 
which is this state. So now that the username is pointing to OX18 bytes of unallocated memory, if we were to connect another client and allocate another client chat, uh, chat client descriptor, well, the heap manager is going to go looking, uh, where can we find OX18 bytes of space to, uh, to allocate this new chat client descriptor? Well, right here, it's going to probably allocate the new descriptor where the username previously was. So now the username field of client one's descriptor points to client two's descriptor. So if we now were to read client one's username, it would give us this structure. It would give us the actual binary data of the chat client instance. And if we were to write it, well, it would overwrite client two's uh, descriptor, which is where the exploit comes in. So if we go back to the code, now the first level is there is a function called, um, where is it? Get flag. Now, the problem with the get flag function is it only works if the client is admin, which we are not. So in order to call this function, we need to make ourselves admin. So if we use the use after free to get client two's descriptor located, uh, pointed to by client one's username, we can now read and write this descriptor, which means we can read all of the values, change just the is admin field to one, and then write it back. And then if we go back to our code, now because it doesn't call this allocate or resize username if the previous user length and the new user length are the same, it just overwrites it because we already set it to OX18 bytes, which is the client descriptor size, we can simply overwrite the client descriptor without allocating new memory. So we skip this function, go straight to the M copy, and just overwrite the client use descriptor. So how does this look in practice? Well, firstly, we're gonna run the chat server on Windows 7. And the reason for this is Windows 10 actually randomizes the allocations on the heap to avoid exactly this. And while it is still possible to exploit this vulnerability on Windows 10, it's significantly more complicated. And I, I will go over uh, how the Windows 10 heap security features work and how to bypass them in another video. So what we're gonna do is connect to our chat server from two separate connections, two separate client and two separate client descriptors. Firstly, we're gonna connect client one and we're gonna set its username to OX18 bytes, which is the same size as the client descriptor. We're then going to change the username to an empty username, which is basically going to trigger the use after free. And then next, we're going to allocate a second client, hoping that the second client's descriptor ends up in our unallocated username fee field, allowing client one's username to read and write the descriptor of client two. And then we should see the data. Okay, so here I've written some much cleaner code, and we're basically just going to use struct or unpack to break down that binary data into a human readable format. So we're going to split the binary data up into the vtable, socks, client ID, and so on field of the client descriptor. And then we can print it out here. So there we can see the address of the vtable, the uh, sock is 80, the client ID is 2 because this is client 2's descriptor, uh, is admin is 0 aka false, and our username length is 18 bytes or OX18 bytes, which is 24 bytes in decimal. And then this is the address of client two's username heap space. So what we're gonna do is simply just change the is admin flag from zero to one and then write it back. So uh, that's quite easy to do. We're just gonna, and then we're gonna use struct.pack uh, to put it back. And then we're just going to set the username to that value. And this is going to overwrite client two's descriptor with the new descriptor, which is the same as the old, other than the fact we changed the admin flag from zero to one. And then if we call client two dot get flag, then we should be able to get the flag. There we go. So we've got the flag. The flag is admin after free. Now, what's so powerful about this vulnerability in this specific application 
is the uh, client descriptor contains a username pointer and a username length, which is used when we read the username and write it. Now, because we can use the use after free to control any value in client 2's descriptor, we can actually change the username to point to any address we want and the username length to be any length we want, which allows us now to read and write any address in memory. So this is called primitive escalation. We had a control over client 2's descriptor and we can now turn that into a vulnerability that allows us to read and write any region of memory that is readable and writable. So we have now escalated our primitives into full arbitrary read slash write. We also have a V table which contains function pointers which are called at points in the application. So by overwriting the V table, we can actually redirect code flow and even get remote code execution. And I will go over that in another video because that's going to be quite a long video. But I hope you get an idea for basically what a use out of free is and how it can be used to pretty much do anything.